Regression analysis is incredible because it's so interpretable. You can get the coefficients on your different features and interpret them in a meaningful way. So here, if you have health insurance, you will have 85.2% lower in medical expenses. Perhaps the most common regression is OLS regression, ordinary least squares. Regression analysis is able to have this nice interpretability when our X variable or our list of features is correlated with our outcome. And then the remainder, U or the error term, is also correlated with the outcome, but not with X. In this case, X is called exogenous, and this is good news for OLS regression because it works great for interpreting the results. Unfortunately, oftentimes the U or the error term is in fact correlated with the X features. In this case, X is called endogenous. When this happens, it's problematic because the results are no longer accurate in their interpretation, and this is bad news for OLS regression. However, there is a fix, and it's called using an instrumental variable approach, or also a two-stage least square approach. That is, we find another variable called Z, which acts as an instrument. This Z variable needs to be correlated with X, but not correlated with the error term. Then the process is simple. You estimate X using the Z, and then you use that estimate for X to do another regression, which is why this is sometimes called two-stage least squares, because you're essentially doing least squares two times. This is a great fix because it allows the data to still have interpretable results, even though our X was endogenous. There's a lot of nifty ways to extract the information you want from the data. Well, we have ways of making you talk. Oftentimes, this type of regression analysis is done in the field of econometrics or statistics. And you'll see it done mostly using software such as Stata, commercial software used for this type of regression analysis. But unfortunately, Stata costs money, and as an individual, you may not have access to it. So we're not gonna be using that today. If it's not being done in Stata, I've seen it done in MATLAB, which is another place that, that the field of econometrics uses. But that also costs money. And as you can imagine, on this channel, we're going to be learning how to do two-stage least squares or instrumental variables in Python. Because it's free, it's awesome, and it just has the ability to tackle so many different problems from machine learning, basic programming, to this type of statistical analysis. In particular, this is what we're going to be doing in this video. First, I'll show you how to perform instrumental variables or two-stage least squares from scratch using Python. Then, I'll show you how to perform instrumental variables or two-stage least squares using built-in methods of Python. And throughout the entire process, I'm going to show you a comparison with an example in Stata or that paid software to make sure we're getting the same results because we're going to be using the same exact data. All right, let's get into it. So first we need to gather the data and distinguish which variables are going to be our instruments, which variables are endogenous, and which variables are exogenous. All of this information comes from the video I have linked in the description that goes through this process in Stata, the same process we're going to be comparing with. We're going to assume that everything they say about the data is correct. And in fact, they give us this data for free download if you follow the website I have also linked in the description. It's called ivhealth.csv if you want to follow along with what we're doing. So Y, our outcome is going to be called log med expense. Our N is just the length of our Y outcome. Our exogenous variables are going to be illness, age, and log income. And our endogenous variable is going to be health insurance, which endogenous, of course, again, is the problematic variable that we're going to have to perform the first stage on. And our instrument, in this case, is called SSI ratio. And I also have a list here just with the names of each of these variables for better output when we get the actual results. So we're gonna have a constant, illness, age, log income, and health insurance. All right, so let's get into stage one. 
In order to perform stage one, I'm going to import NumPy as NP, and I'm going to create our Z. So Z in this case isn't the actual instrument, but the combination of the variables we'll use to fix our endogenous variable. So I'm just gonna slap together our constant term, our already exogenous variables that don't need the fix done to them, and the instrument. Next, from statsmodels.regression.linearmodel, I'm gonna import OLS. I'm gonna say our linear model is equal to OLS of our endogenous as our outcome, and Z as our regressor, as we defined Z above. Call the function dot fit, and then I'll do lm.summary to see the output of this first stage regression. In fact, let's look at this output, and then we can compare it to the first stage regression output from the Stata example. So you can see our coefficient for our constant is 0.959, and there's the other coefficients for our variables, the standard errors, the t statistic, and the p-values. Our r squared is 0 0.068, as you can see in the top right corner, and our f statistic is 185.1. Let's see how that compares to what they did in Stata. So in the first stage, we have the dependent variable is a health insurance and it is regressed on all the exogenous variables plus that was our instrument here. So we have all the X1s and this is our X2, the instrument. Good news, it looks the same. Okay, now we're ready for stage two. From stage one, we have an estimate for our endogenous variable. So x hat we're going to define in a similar way that we did z above. So np.1s for our constant term, our exogenous variables, and now lm.fitted values. This is equivalent to multiplying our parameter from stage one with our z, and that is x hat. Now all we have to do is say stage two is equal to ols with y as our outcome and x hat as our regressor dot fit. And now that that has been fitted, we can calculate the other values in the output, such as the standard errors, the T stats, the P values, and the R squared. It's important, however, that we use the actual X instead of the X hat in these calculations. So first let's get what our parameter was. So beta is equal to stage two dot params. And our actual X is now the same thing as our X hat, but with the original endogenous variable plugged in. So we have our MP dot ones again, we have our exogenous again, and now the actual endogenous. So Y hat then is equal to the original X multiplied by beta, the parameter from our stage two output. Okay, now it's time to calculate the standard errors. So we can get u hat, or the estimate for the error, as y minus y hat. k is just the number of parameters. s2, or s squared, is the inner product of our u hat divided by n. Our variance, or covariance matrix, is our s squared multiplied by the inverse of the product of x hat. And our standard error, of course, is just the square root of the diagonals of the covariance matrix. Okay, from there we can get our t stats, which is just beta divided by the standard errors and then the p-values, which come from the t-distribution, so let's import t from scipy.stats. Our degrees of freedom are just our number of observations minus the number of parameters, minus one. Our p-values are two-sided, so two times one minus the cumulative distribution function of our t, of our absolute value of our t-stats with the degrees of freedom plugged in. Last, let's get our r-squared. First, we get the tss, which is y minus the mean of y, product with y minus the mean of y again our RSS, which is the inner product of our U hat, or estimated error, and then our R squared is just simply one minus RSS divided by TSS. This last step here is just to put all these results together into a pandas data frame so that we can see what they look like nice and clean. And let's take a look at those now. So you notice our parameter for health insurance is negative 0.852. Our constant term is now 6.58, and our R squared value is 0 0.0709. I printed it out at the top there. You can take a look at all the other numbers here. Notice that our p-values are all very significant. So let's compare this to the people who are doing this in Stata to see how well our results match up. And we have these results. So now we get the predicted values from this equation for health insurance and we plug it in here. So in the second step, this is not the original variable, it's the predicted values here. And then we estimate these using normal OLS. 
and with the with the predicted values here and notice that this is the coefficient here if you scroll up up above that was a very different coefficient so here if you have health insurance then you will be 85.2% less likely uh, you will have 85.2% uh, in lower in medical expenses so we have changed the sign when we uh, use the instrumental variables that's a big change from just using a, lo a less regression Excellent, it looks the exact same. Now we're ready to use the built-in method to perform the same task. From linearmodels.iv, I'm going to import IV2SLS, which of course stands for instrumental variable or two-stage least squares. Now, of course, you might have to download this using Conda or pip install. And if you're getting an error on the import after having installed this, it might be your version of NumPy. At least that's the problem I was running into. So you can check your version by importing NumPy and typing NumPy dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. And I'm using version 1.20.1, .1, which works great with this linear models .iv package. So just make sure that is up to date if you're getting an error. There are actually two different ways you can use this built-in function in Python. First, you can use a formula. This is my favorite way to do it. So you write our y variable, which is log med expense, a little squiggly, and then the equation on the right hand side. So one for a constant plus illness plus age plus log income. All of those are exogenous. And then what you do is you put in brackets the endogenous variable with the instrument. So health insurance squiggly SSI ratio. So SSI ratio is our instrument and health insurance was our endogenous variable. Pretty simple. In fact, this is similar to the syntax that is used in Stata. And now all we have to do is say our model is equal to iv2sls.from underscore formula with that formula plugged in and the data for reference dot fit. And I'm going to put covariance type unadjusted, but unadjusted, of course, would be the homoscedastic version, but you can do more robust versions like the heteroscedastic or even cluster it. Just take a look at the documentation that I have linked in the description. And then all we have to do is called mod dot summary. And here's what that output looks like. Nice and clean and delivered. So you see our R squared value, which should look familiar, 0.0709 our parameters with our intercept, illnesses, age, log income, and health insurance at negative 0.8522. I really like using this with the formula because it already names all of our variables for easy interpretation with the output. Let's go ahead and just double check to make sure that's exactly what they got in Stata. Of course, the alternative to this would be to not use the from formula method. So first I'm going to do from stats models.api import add constant. I'm just going to add our constant to our exogenous variables. All right, and then I do model is equal to iv2sls where our dependent variable is y as we defined it above. Our exogenous variable is our exogenous x with that constant added in. Our endogenous variable indog is our endogenous variable and our instrument, of course, is instrument, all of which was defined at the very beginning. And then we just do the same thing, dot fit. Again, I'm gonna do the covariance type unadjusted so we can compare, and mod dot summary, there it is. So we get the same R squared, same exact values. Now the parameters, unfortunately, are not labeled except for with exogenous 0, 1, 2, 3, and endogenous which of course is our health insurance at negative 0.8522. But there is yet again another way of how you can use the built-in function if you don't have the capabilities to do from formula. And this is exactly what they got in Stata as well. So there you have it. This is how you can do instrumental variable or the two-stage least squares econometric approach or statistical approach to regression analysis for more accurate inference of your parameters for the effects on the outcome. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please click subscribe. Here are two other videos that I think you'll enjoy.